All right, guys. Papa Pepper here. Um, man, Mama Pepper actually has a birthday probably on the day this is going to get released, and she's going to be 31. And it's been interesting. I mean, I met her back when she was 18. Been together a long time. Had a lot of things in her life change over that time. And really been appreciating her, obviously, the whole time. But even reflecting now, I mean, she's pregnant with our sixth child. Um, man. You know, the oldest one isn't even nine yet, right? And uh, then she's got me to deal with. Besides all the children. If you look, I'm in my bathroom garden, okay? <laughs> this is... This woman, by the, <clears throat> when we left Wisconsin, it was in the fall, winter of uh, 2015. We didn't actually purchase our land um, for like two years when we moved down to Arkansas. And uh, now we finally got this mobile home on the property last summer or so. So we've only been here a couple months. Um, and now she's finally got a home again. But the moment she gets a home again... You know, this is the type of stuff I do. This is the bathroom, guys. I'm going to give you a little tour of the bathroom garden and an update. I'll show you some of the other stuff in the house now. These are the tamarillo plants. These guys are incredible. I actually let some of the fruit dry on here. Um, and save some seeds for them, too. They were doing so incredible outside. We definitely liked them and appreciated it. So I thought, you know what, if we can overwinter a couple, they'll start off that much bigger. So this is the one. And the other one, you know, reaches up to the ceiling. And it's still doing great. And then I do have a couple shorties here too. So tamarillos are ones we got introduced to at the Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Company. Um, we actually tried some with David Henry Kaiser, um, kind of their mascot guy. Um, he had grabbed a couple off one of the plants and handed some to us and the kids. We definitely was like, wow, this is so cool. So we got to grow on them. And uh, hey, here's kind of my pride and joy at the moment because of some of the stuff that's been going on. Check it out. Okay. This is a purple sweet potato. Purple sweet potato. It's got all those little roots on there. And that, my friends, from Sapper Gardener, okay? Um, you know, he was happy. He finally reached a thousand subscribers. He was trying to do some community building giveaway. I think his stuff kind of got interpreted. You know, Farmer G did a video about it, but I think his stuff actually got interpreted as, as a spam activity. Um, I'm not even sure if he had a warning but they just nuked his account. So his YouTube channel right now is gone. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about it. A lot of people making videos about it. I've got a letter in the mail to him. I'm hoping he'll give me a call this week and I can kind of hear some things from his side of the story just straight from his mouth. So I'm working on that. But I got his potatoes growing right here, guys. Purple sweet potatoes. He gifted them to me, right? He sent me two packages for free just to bless me with some stuff. So that's pretty cool. Here, I've got one of these planted in the yard. And this is the other one, but this is actually a sky blue elderberry. The elderberries around here are very dark purple. Uh, but I know a guy um, on Steam at Fleming Farm. We decided to do an exchange, so we did an exchange. I've got one planted in the yard and this one growing here. And then I've got a number of cuttings and stuff I'm working on. But one of the cool things, and um, recently ran into, I think it was Midwest Gardener. Midwest Gardener was talking about this being one of the plants he will never try growing again. Um, it definitely has some shortfalls. And he's in zone 6. I'm at the border of 6 and 7, so I get a lot of the same conditions that he would. And I can understand why he said what he said. Um, I was very happy to come across the thing. And, uh, you know, even just watching his video, I'm like, ah, this guy likes Baker Creek. Like, totally dig it. That's my type of people. Um, but this is an out on Gia. I had six or eight out in the garden and they all fruited up but none of them ripened and the rest of them died. I lifted one and put it in a pot to bring inside to my bathroom garden and it's finally getting fruit ripening on it right now. If you guys notice I, I did a video once called the most savage plant in my garden I think and this thing is just covered in crazy thorns. I mean very pokey. My dog is probably wondering what I'm up to in here. A lot of barking. But these are finally getting uh, ripe, and uh, very soon I'll be trying them. And I was hoping that, hey, if I overwinter, I mean, it grew pretty big. I, I trimmed it back and, um, you know, moved it inside. So it grew pretty big from a tiny little seed. I'm like, hey, if I overwinter, it'll probably be that much better next year. Well, the other thing Midwest Gardener said was that uh, his one that he overwintered did worse the second year. So I'm like, oh, man. But down in Colombia, I think they call this Lulo. Um, Narangia is another name. It's down in, in South America. 
So I'm at least trying it, and I'm gonna do a video about kind of things to consider when you're gardening. And one of the things I'm gonna point out in there is being willing to try new things, uh, the tamarillo, the naranjilla, stuff like that was new things for us, and there's a lot of benefit and knowledge and learning and stuff that can come with new things, and I'll, I'll get into that in that video. But I wanted to show you guys one other thing here today, too. So if you guys look here, there's this creepy grow coming from under under this door here. And the reason that is, is that not only has Mama Pepper given up her bathroom, but she gave up her laundry room too. Turn it back on. So here, we actually got a couple little seed potatoes starting to sprout. So we're looking forward to them. Yeah, buddy, it's okay. And then I'm doing some germination tests, and also these are from a germination test. So on this side, we've got our Carolina Reapers, and on this side, we've got our Ghost Peppers. When we were opening shop for our online store, I wanted to do germination tests to make sure all of the plants were uh, very, all the seeds were very val uh, viable. So I wanted to make sure that at least 75% sprouted. And I think on these, Man, at least one of these we had 100%. Not sure about the other one. Also, back there in the back is a little sprout of that purple um, potato, sweet potato from Sapper Gardener. Down here is a germination test I'm doing on the toothache plant. So very happy to see them sprouting. And I think we've reached at least 75%. So that's pretty good. And then up here I'm doing a germination test for rabbit tobacco. And they are sprouting in there as well. Um, so we're going to be happy to offer those seeds in our online store soon enough. And normally in Wisconsin I would start peppers like this back in about mid-February or so. Down here I didn't plan on starting any in December. But I have a hard time taking little seedlings and killing them. So I thought, you know what, we'll let them go and we'll see how they do. So that's what we're working on. Right, child? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just had a wonderful time down at Bobbleheads. We got some things planned that people don't know, but I got to get going on them. And then tomorrow we actually uh, are visiting somebody else we met recently, but just somebody kind of out in the middle of nowhere by themselves, an older lady, single older lady on some land, and having a hard time with some stuff. So we're going to swing through there and see if we can, uh, <clears throat> we can bless her. Just ran into her when we were actually selling or uh, taking some of the seeds we sold and mailing them out at the post office. She saw me with a couple of little kids of ours and start asking some questions and um, talk to her on the phone a couple times since then but uh, she finds us interesting she can use her hand with things sometimes I guess and we're gonna head out there for lunch tomorrow actually on Mama Pepper's birthday the lady doesn't know that because she'd probably turn us down if she did but we'll uh, we'll head out there and enjoy it anyway so it's just part of uh, like I said enjoying the family enjoying my wife and the things she puts up with but she'll look at stuff like this like honestly we just had our our uh, third batch of salami ever and uh, I used a lot of stinging nettle in it which is not a, a natural normal thing to do but so healthy for you it's so good for you and then put a lot of um ghost pepper in it between the whole batch three pounds I think I put in two whole peppers um, but it's got just the perfect level of heat for us anyway mama really liked it too which you know she'll call it quits if it's too hot but, uh, you know, so even with just hot, hot peppers, like we're growing here, she knows the, the value of it and gives me a certain amount of freedom as we try to live life, do things, and provide for more of our own needs. So, just wanted to give a quick update on just the inside garden. And love it down here, too, the fact that we're able to prepare our garden for winter, or for spring, all winter long. So, normally in Wisconsin, be buried snow, wouldn't be able to do that. All right, guys, pop out. As always, I'm Papa Pepper, and I'd like to remind you, don't post for free. If you'd like to be part of a revolution in social media, an economic power to the people where users can actually blog for cryptocurrency, then I'd recommend that you check out steamit.com and join the revolution. Papa out.